Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen, this is proving to be the most difficult album review I have ever recorded in my entire life. This is literally my fourth attempt at recording a review for this brand new Enslaved album. Why? I don't know. I honestly think that my brain is beginning to melt thanks to the literal chaos, the never-ending chaos and buffoonery that is 2020. You know what? Whatever. Fuck it. I can do this. If Enslaved can persevere through a fucking pandemic to deliver me this album, then I can persevere through eight minutes of my own fucking collapsing sanity to simply talk about this album in a calm, professional, and detailed manner. Or at least, to the best of my ability, considering, again, I'm really beginning to fucking lose it. Whatever. That's boring. You don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about this new Enslaved album. So let's do it. Let's talk about this new album from Enslaved. <laughs> Utgard is the 15th studio album from Norwegian black metal crew Enslaved, who have consistently put out some of my favorite music in this entire genre. Their 1994 record Frost, in particular, I would call a masterpiece of Norwegian black metal. I love this album so much that I flew to Philadelphia last year specifically to see Enslaved perform this album live in its entirety at the Decibel Beer and Metal Festival. For all these reasons, I've been super jazzed about this new studio album, Utgard, which I believe shows Enslaved at their most ambitious point musically and conceptually yet as the band utilizes a very unique and unorthodox fusion of Norwegian black metal, Viking metal, and old-school progressive rock to tap into the literal ungodly chaos that is 2020. As Kerrang! magazine so beautifully puts it, on Utgard, enslaved take the listener through a frightening landscape in Norse mythology where the gods have no control and chaos reigns. Embarking on this expedition is a metaphor for journeying through your own unconsciousness and facing darkness to find rebirth. And the key word here, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed chaos. This album is chaotic as holy hell to the point where it can prove to be genuinely jarring and overwhelming. Like honestly, I would not berate or bemoan any of you for giving up on this album after a very quick listen. There's a lot of information to swallow and a lot of research, frankly, that you might have to do in turn in order to fully understand everything that's happening here. But doing so, ladies and gentlemen, is an incredibly rewarding experience. As with every listen, Utgard becomes more and more transparent, more and more beautiful, more and more cathartic. What initially feels very clumsy and awkward quickly blossoms into perhaps one of the more interesting and expansive black metal records released in 2020. Almost bordering on the avant-garde blackened psychedelia of a band like Arancy Pazuzu, dare I say. For instance, the track Jetta Greita sports a very heavy, blackened groove with a lot of very ominous vocals. It has keyboard parts, it has weird organ parts, it has a lot of weird and wild sporadic little moments that almost feel pulled from the glory days of bands like Gentle Giant, Genesis, and King Crimson. The tracker Jotun builds a very aggressive, icy, atmospheric black metal number on top of an almost synth rock, post-punk kind of rhythm and swagger. The track sequence quite liberally borrows some more modern new prog influence from bands like Catatonia and Anathema to create something a little bit more emotive, to create something a little bit more ethereal, particularly in the middle of this number, focusing on some very transient, minimalistic vocals and guitar passages, before eventually escalating and evolving into something a little bit more frantic, a little bit more frenzied, almost on par with the sonic manipulation that we would see in the most experimental work from the Beatles with horns and strings and guitars and keyboards all layered on top of each other to create this really bizarre, almost claustrophobic experience. Even tracks that seem to hearken to the more traditional enslaved sound are still cram-packed with their own unique progressive twists and turns. Take for instance opening track Fires in the Dark, a very raw, 
very earthy, very unsettling, melodic black metal track with a particularly chilling vocal choir that sounds like the kind of thing I would hear in a trailer for an A24 horror film. I was even very weirdly reminded of the trailer for The Lighthouse for a very brief moment. Going further, the track Flight of Thought and Memory is more or less a traditional enslaved black metal number with more atmospheric flourishes until the very ending. Closing on a very ambient passage that, truth be told, would not be out of place on an Imperial Triumphant record. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of information here to swallow musically and conceptually. I won't lie to you folks, on my first listen, I was even puzzled by some of the twists and turns found throughout Oathguard. But as I continued to exercise curiosity and patience, and continued to peel back layer after layer to find more and more, the album grew on me more and more, and I grew to appreciate it more and more. It eventually unraveled itself in all kinds of new and exciting ways, and sequences and passages that I may not have enjoyed on my first listen now stand out as some of my favorite passages that Enslaved has ever written. Is the album still a little bit awkward here and there presentation-wise? Sure, and I will also concede that the production could be a little bit better on this thing. The vocals in particular can be a little bit off-putting in the first couple of tracks. There's all these very loud grunts and snarls. It makes it sound as if Gollum is trying to sing a fucking black metal song, and I'm not really feeling that approach. But all that aside, I would still feel very comfortable saying that this is Enslaved's most ambitious album, and despite its downfalls, perhaps one of their best yet, or at least their best of this modern era. With all this in mind, I feel pretty comfortable giving this a very enthusiastic, 3.5 out of 5. Not quite a 4. We're not quite there. I think the album requires a little bit more refinement and polish in order for me to give it a 4. But, again, an enthusiastic 3.5 out of 5. I think that enslaved fans will enjoy this record so long as they exercise patience and curiosity. I think that fans of progressive and experimental music will definitely get a kick out of this. They'll get a kick out of its high concept and all of its weird twists and turns and its genuinely unpredictable flow in nature. Will the longtime enslaved fans and traditional black metal nerds love it? That's hard to say, but they don't really like anything anyway, so fuck it, I don't care. And I honestly doubt that Enslaved care as well. In, in fact, I'm willing to bet that from here on, Enslaved is going to begin indulging more and more in these old-school prog rock influences. And I'm honestly all for it, especially if they can continue to maintain this particular balance we see on Utgard. With, again, maybe just a little bit of refinement and polish in the future. Literally, literally just a wee bit, guys. Just a fucking wee bit. 3.5 out of 5, an incredibly exciting and ambitious new record from Enslaved, one I look forward to revisiting in the near future, perhaps even on vinyl. Check it out and see for yourself. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking-immediately, and you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.